All right. Hello, I'm Betty Casey. I'm editor of Tulsa Kids Magazine, and we partnered with the Children's Hospital at St. Francis to do a series of discussions about children's health. You can find these interviews on our website, or you can look for PJ's Corner in the print and digital magazine. Today, we're talking with Dr. Wayman Lamb about allergies. Welcome, Dr. Lamb. Oh, thank you. Happy to be here. Dr. Lamb is an allergy and immuno, immuno, immunology specialist at <laughs> the Warren Clinic. I'm sorry, I can't say that. He is board certified in allergy and immuno, immunology and internal medicine. He attended medical school at the, at the Saba University School of Medicine. He completed his residency at Rochester General Hospital and did his fellowship at Buffalo State University of New York School of Medicine and Biomedical Sciences. So today, let's see, let's just start. It, um, it's sort of allergy season, so let's start with seasonal mm -hmm. allergies. Sure. Um, I'm sure a lot of families are dealing, dealing with those right now. So what seasonal allergies are most common right now? Uh, so now, you know, now the summer's approaching, uh, tree season tends to be tapering off, but we're kind of high time for grass. So grass is probably the major pollen that families are dealing with. Uh, there's also mold though, because mold is around all year unless there's a hard frost. And if you have pets, of course, pets are, if they're exposed to them, that's a year round allergen. And so if you're allergic to pets, then that could be something to be considered. But mainly grass and, uh, and mold is what I'd say at this part of the year. Okay. Um, and so what would, are the treatment options for these kinds of seasonal allergies? Uh, so if you have mild allergies, you're, you know, you have a mild runny nose, little itchy eyes that, you know, doesn't bother you that much. Going over the counter is very reasonable to start. Just buying uh, any histamines like cetirizine or the brand name Zyrtec or uh, getting Allegra, which is a uh, fexofenadine. These are good starts when it's minor. When you're getting more stuffy, then I would reach for the nasal sprays that are over the counter, uh, like Zutikazone and Trimcinolone. Um, these are intranasal steroids that help with the congestion better than the the, the pills do. Uh, and that's a good start, you know, when when it's mild and that can take care of most people's symptoms when you know it's it's not that severe. But you know, once you have respiratory symptoms like wheezing, shortness of breath, or uh, if the, the medicines aren't helping, that's the time when you you should ask to see your local allergist or get a referral uh, because we can do a lot more just yes, over counter medications. Um, we can offer allergy testing. We can specifically what you're allergic to and tell you what avoidance precautions you can take. Uh, and really the biggest benefit that seeing us is that we can actually offer what we call allergy immunotherapy. We can actually desensitize you to whatever it is you're allergic to, to allow you to not require as much medication. So really we change the way your immune system can react to allergens. So that's a really big benefit of seeing uh, an allergist for, for, uh, for that therapy. Okay, you, you've talked about over-the-counter uh, medications. Can children take those? Yeah, the majority of them, uh, children can take them. Uh, there are, well, they, 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 they are typically can be given off-label under the guidance of a doctor when, he, when they're under two, but typically over two years and older, um, you can just look at the box and they'll tell you the, the ages um, uh, and the dosing recommendations for, PA, for kids. Okay, so read the label or ask your pharmacist if you're yeah, unsure. Yeah, you're exactly. Good. And if it's younger than what's recommended on, on the box, then you would have to ask your pediatrician or your allergist. Right. Okay. Um, how does a parent know whether their child has a seasonal allergy or a virus? This okay. is like a common yeah. question. Yeah, very common questions. We see that there is a ton of overlapping symptoms between a viral infection and cold. You know, even myself, if I start sniffling, it's not, you're not sure <laughs> what it could be. You know, we, the, so the overlapping symptoms that you see in both cases can be like the sneezing, the stuffy nose, congestion, the cough, and the drainage. You know, the, the, that can be an allergic person or someone with a, with a virus, like a rhinovirus or cold. Uh, but the biggest difference, uh, and this will be the alarm bells, would be if you have fever, that's not an allergic symptom. If you have body aches, you have malaise, which mainly means that you just don't really feel well. You, this would lead towards this is probably more a viral infection. Uh, another another clue would be if you know you have other family members that you know have similar symptoms and you you may have caught this virus from them. And also length of time. So if this symptom lasts for a few days and or a week or so, and it goes, it starts to get better, then it's probably, it's probably virus because uh, usually allergies will last longer than that. They'll last the entire season. Or if it's a 
you know, perennial year round allergen, they'll be they'll last all year. So allergies will tend to last a lot longer and you usually feel pretty reasonable uh, during that with, with allergies, but you just have all those uh, symptoms. Okay. Um, what about the drainage? Cause sometimes I've heard people say, well, if it's green or, <laughs> I mean, uh, are, are there differences in the drainage the, that you the, the color, I mean, it, that's, a, that's a tough one. It's pretty similar. I mean, Sure, maybe allergies well, might be more severe, but it's really hard to delineate because allergic patients can have pretty severe thick congestion. So we do, uh, patients love bringing in the, the color of their tissue to the office all the time, it, but really it doesn't lend that much uh, data for us for okay. delineating this allergy or viral infection. Okay, thank you for clearing that up because I, I hear people say that all the time. <laughs> Are, I, another thing I hear all the time are that allergies in this part of the country are worse than in other parts of the country. Is that really true? Uh, yeah, so Oklahomans are actually not imagining this. There is actual real data that suggest, suggests this. So there's this um, uh, research in coming that is called the um, Allergy Capitals, where they actually do studies on this to see like where is actually the worst place in America that is allergic. And so there's actually a list of top 100 cities of most allergenic cities. And so Oklahoma City ranked uh, number six, I believe, and Tulsa ranked 21. And so how they came up with the score is it was based on the pollen counts in the area and also how severe those pollens are in terms of how allergenic they are. They also looked at over-the-counter medication use, like how, how much you know, Oklahoma's bought in terms of medications. And they looked at the number of allergists in the area. So are there enough doctors in the area to help treat it? And so based on those three numbers, they put them together and we're definitely in the top 100. And so it's, we're not number one. I think Scranton was number one on that list. And it's kind of all over the country. Like, um, and there isn't a specific area of the country that's worse per se, but uh, definitely we're on, always on the higher end every year from year to year. Okay, so we're not imagining that. That's good to know. Um, what about asthma? How do seasonal allergies affect children with asthma? And what recommendations do you have for them? Oh yeah, absolutely. So any any child asthma really it's, it's recommended in the guidelines to get allergy tested because more than nine percent asthma in, in in children are allergic, and you can really address the allergies to reduce the asthmatic triggers. Because uh, right now, you know, when you are diagnosed with asthma, you typically will need inhalers, and frequently those inhalers will have inhaled steroids, or even need, the the kid can need um, uh, oral steroids as well, uh, which can can improve the breathing, but they're really not healthy for, for the child. You know, uh, these inhaled steroids and uh, systemic steroids, they can uh, suppress uh, growth. Their, their long-term uh, final height can be suppressed. Uh, they can increase blood sugars, raise the risk for diabetes, increase blood pressure. So all sorts of neg negative things can happen with steroid exposure for treatment of asthma. And if we can stop the allergic triggers, uh, uh, that we do in, in the allergy clinic, we can reduce the real, real need for all of those uh, steroid exposures and really just allow them to be healthier and not require as much medication. So very important once you, your child's diagnosed with asthma to get allergy tested. I, I didn't know that. that so it, it, so those things work in, conjun in conjunction and, and a, an allergy specialist could actually help a child stay off of medication if they have asthma. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, let's switch to food allergies. Mm -hmm. I know this is a big thing with children. Um, mm -hmm. We hear about a lot, but are there other foods that tend to cause allergies? Yeah, so there, uh, there's a, a uh, you can uh, be allergic to you know any food theoretically, uh, but there are very common ones that uh, children are allergic to. So the main ones being the. Uh, uh, peanuts, uh, milk, and egg are probably the most common, uh, but we also see tree nut allergy, wheat, uh, egg, and soy. Uh, these are other um, uh, things that children can be allergic to, and also uh, sesame and seafood are also uh, becoming more and more common allergens for, for children. And you know, the, the reactions can, be, can range, you know, it can be minor, patients can have just have highs, or it can just flare uh, a child's eczema, uh, but sometimes it can be pretty uh, life-threatening. You know, at, at, you can have severe anaphylaxis. Uh, there are cases of you know real deaths, unfortunately, from food allergies, and so this is always every parent's worst nightmare. So it's very important uh, whenever you have some kind of reaction to you know get tested, and that we can you know delineate exactly what you're allergic to and you know, what we can avoid. So those reactions to uh, food allergy would be uh, skin-related for the most part, or uh, what, uh, what oh, well, those symptoms? 
Oh, so so the, the main one that we'll see if you're truly allergic is the, uh, a severe reaction uh, like anaphylaxis, where you can get real closing, shortness of breath, hives all over, a uh, pretty severe like threatening reaction that would require uh, the the emergency uh, epinephrine pen to uh, to treat. So it can it, it's frequently that severe, uh, and and even if the initial reaction was not, and they were just a, like a skin hive reaction, the next reactions can progress to be that severe. Okay. Okay. So. Um, in in treating food allergies, so how how do you treat those? Uh, so the current standard of care is you know making the diagnosis and strictly avoiding food and keeping the EpiPen as needed um, uh, in the school and, and at home uh, and 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 that's been the standard of care for many years. But now we do actually have an elective option for food uh, food allergies, and we can. Uh, desensitized for it now. So similarly, as we talked to with the hay fever, uh, we can now do that for food. It's called uh, food oral immunotherapy. Um, and it's the same idea. We, we we basically expose the child to like very tiny doses of the food allergen, and we eventually escalate the dose until we get to uh, maintenance dose when they can tolerate very large amounts. Uh, so just to give you some perspective, um, uh, like a peanut allergic kid and have a severe reaction from just a single bite of peanut butter, uh, but our, the, the children who go through the entire process and get desensitized, they can tolerate a peanut butter sandwich daily. So, um, so, quite, quite, so we can have very good success with you know patients who are you know well it, uh, they're very allergic, but we can actually desensitize them. Uh, it's important to know that we don't know that this to be a, to be a cure, but it is very effective at desensitizing them, and it's a, it can be very impactful for quality of life. You know, you no longer need to worry about. Uh, when you go to restaurants, uh, when you when you travel, when your your child is at school, you know that they're tolerating a large dose at home, and they will they will tolerate additional doses outside if they were accidentally given to them. That could be life changing. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um. So if a if, does this have to start at a certain time in life with this desensitization, or can it be any time, or how does that begin? Uh, so uh, theoretically, we can do it for any age, um, from 18 months and up, up all, all the way into adulthood, we can even start the therapy. Uh, it, it is time intensive, and typically uh, in older children and adults, it, it is more difficult to do. There are more reactions. We find that the younger children, uh, those you know, 18 months, to six years of age, it, it tends to be a lot more active. Uh, uh, at, uh, and we have to have more success rates um, and the child is better able to, to do the therapy too. Uh, so I would say uh, any age can theoretically do it, but we typically do uh, younger children for this. Okay, that's, uh, that's amazing. Um, finally, what would you say to parents who are trying to decide whether to treat their child's allergies at home, get help from their pediatricians, or seek care from an allergy specialist? Uh, so I would say if, you know, if, if your child is old enough uh, for those over-the-counter medications, you know, that, that's always a good place to start to just pick up some Allegra or Cetirazine for the counter to, to try, um, uh, especially if the, if the symptoms only occur occasionally during spring and fall, you know, that's a pretty typical thing that is very common. Um, but once it becomes more severe, the medicines aren't helping there's uh, any signs of asthma, like shortness of breath and wheezing or bad coughing, uh, that's the time when it's, I would recommend getting referral, uh, see allergy, because we can provide the allergy skin freak testing that is you know, specific to whatever it is they're, they're allergic to, and uh, we can uh, treat more appropriately and, uh, and, more, and give, offer more targeted therapies. Okay, so um, really if it's interfering with their quality of life or it's ongoing and you're concerned maybe they're missing school or mm -hmm. missing because of these allergies, then it might be time to, to, to do something more than at home. Uh, yeah, absolutely. If it's like affecting their schoolwork, you know, uh, the, the child is congested all the time and they're, they're dripping on their, in their classroom and they're asking to be excused. Uh, so, and, or they're, they're embarrassed and their friends, you know, make fun of them. You know, these are, these are definitely huge quality of life issues that the child would have to deal with. And um, th this would already be an indication to go get tested and to get better, better treatment options. Okay. And so you would, your advice to them would be to see an allergist because there are so many things you can do and these treatment options that uh, you have at your disposal that could, could help them in their lives. So yeah, ab yeah, absolutely. There's the, we, we, we can offer the, the testing to figure out exactly if there's any changes to the home we can, you can make. 
there are some prescription medications are an option. And then there's also the immunotherapy we can desensitize to. So we have a lot of uh, options at our disposal that, you know, fit right for the family and uh, what their goals are. So you don't have to live with it. You can, you can. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's great. That's great. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think that those are all the questions that I have. Thank you for sharing your expertise with us, Dr. Lam. We oh, no problem. Thank you and, for having me. Yeah, and thank you to the Children's Hospital at St. Francis for helping us provide this great information for parents. Great. Thank you.